Hey everybody, what's happening? Son of a Silverstacker here. In today's numismatic news and information for the 26th day of October 2021, I'd like to welcome you to join me at Jane Bullion so we can look at the live spot prices. So after it loads here, it looks like gold is down 371 to 181061, silver down 21 cents to 2445, platinum down $10.03 to 106438, and palladium down 1748 to 206902. Now it looks like they have in stock uh, status here for silver at 494 items. Let's check yesterday's video. In stock 469. So 494, 469. They definitely have added more inventory. Now I want to thank a awesome subscriber here. Uh, gave me a heads up on this yesterday and gave me enough time to do the research on this. So I really appreciate that, Greg S. Big shout out to you, sir. Want to thank you very much. Now this is a press release uh, yesterday. October 25, 2021, from the United States Department of the Treasury. And the Treasury announces appointment of Ventress Gibson as Deputy Director of the U.S. Mint. And it says, this is out of Washington. Today, the U.S. Department of Treasury announced the appointment of Ventress Gibson to serve as Deputy Director of the U.S. Mint. Ms. Gibson brings decades of senior federal service to the role and is a United States Navy veteran. She will serve as acting director. There you go. She's the acting director now. I would guess that's replacing Allison Dooney or Dune, making her the first black person to head this bureau. Ventress's decades of federal service will be an asset to the U.S. Mint and to the dedicated workers who carry out its operations, said Deputy Secretary Wally Adiemo. The, her historic appointment reflects our ongoing commitment to building a qualified, diverse workforce at Treasury and as bureaus that will serve the American people well. It says here, thank you to the Secretary of the Treasury for entrusting me with this important responsibility, said Ventress Gibson. I'm delighted to join the U.S. Mint and excited to continue connecting America through coins alongside the highly dedicated and professional workforce of this agency. Prior to, see, that's awesome. That's a... That's a little boost right there to her fellow colleagues, right? Uh, and she just started, and she's already lifting them up. Prior to joining the U.S. Mint, Ms. Gibson served as a director of human resources for Washington, D.C.'s Department of Human Resources. Wow. Um, during her tenure with the D.C. government, she provided executive oversight and execution of human capital programs and services for nearly 37,000 employees. Ms. Gibson, a United States Navy veteran, also previously served as the Associate De uh, Deputy Assistant Secretary for Human Resources for the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. In this capacity, she was responsible for the development, articulation, and delivery of department-wide human resources, policies, plans, and programs. Okay. So we're starting to see a pattern here uh, of her expertise, right? There it is. Um, human capital, human resources, that sort of thing. Uh, people, people person. Ms. Gibson's career with the federal government also includes the Federal Aviation Administration, that's the FAA, where she served as the Assistant Administrator for Human Resources and in the Department of Veterans Affairs as the Deputy Assistant Secretary for Human Resource Management and its first Deputy Assistant Secretary for Resolution Management. Okay, so that's resolution. That's good. So she knows how to work um, out things, probably arbitration and that sort of thing. She was uh, the VA's highest ranking woman veteran and directed human resources management and civil rights programs affecting 230,000 employees. Big time, big time person here uh, with a career that spans more than 40 years in both human resources, executive and professional positions. Ms. Gibson is the recipient of numerous awards and commendations. She has received the Exceptional and Meritus Service Awards, FAA Manager Association's Leadership Award, National Hispanic Coalition's President Award, and the Northern New Jersey Metropolitan Area's Prestigious Woman of the Year Award. A graduate of the Federal Executive Institute, Executive Technique and Aspen Institute, Ms. Gibson attended the University of Maryland University College, and Ms. Gibson has three children, four grandchildren, and two golden retrievers. That's awesome. She's a dog person, people. Come on. How bad is that? So this is the um, picture of Allison Dune. It says here, and this is on the Mint's website, she's the acting director, but we know that's obviously changed because... Um, well, Ms. Gibson has been appointed as the deputy director and will serve as the acting director. So this is a little bit outdated, but and this is too because it's not vacant anymore. And this has been replaced by the deputy director. So that's pretty amazing, pretty amazing indeed. Now, let's go here to LinkedIn real quick and look at Ventress Gibson's. She's the acting director, U.S. Mint, NAPA fellow. That's what, National Association of Public... Employees or association, I don't even know. Washington, D.C., Baltimore area, 
Um, in addition to my expertise in human resources management, I will also serve as a motivational speaker in the areas of generational awareness, diversity and inclusion, communications, team building, executive accountability, human resources, leadership, and organizational political savvy. Her specialties, how to avoid a reduction in force. Okay. Reshaping the workforce strategy. Okay. How to navigate the generational maze. All right, fine. Leadership dynamics, diversity and inclusion, HR metrics and strategic planning. Okay. Uh, that's probably like who's using uh, what benefits at the company, right? Human resources metrics. Uh, how often they're using it, you know, that kind of thing. Performance management, uh, mediation, facilitation, arbitration, EEO, administrative investigations. So, she seems very talented indeed in human relations. And you know what? It could be that the United States Mint is, fa um, I guess, facing some challenges when it comes to hiring people, right? So, what was Allison Dune's um, expertise? Let's ask that, right? Let's find out what she was up to. Uh, is her expertise people, capital, human capital, personnel, workers? Let's find out. So it says here, Allison Dune currently serves as the acting director of the United States Mint. Well, that's not anymore. She started in mint March 2021 as a CAO, as administrative officer, and she was a chief financial officer. So she's into money. So CFO here, CFO there, CFO, deputy CFO there. Okay, so they, they've replaced a money person with a whoops a human capital person right so there's that that's really interesting so the mint is definitely shifting their focus away from the financial operations of the mint maybe because they probably did really well for themselves this year uh as far as making the money but i believe where they are finding challenges and much like any other business right now those challenges can be found in personnel and hiring enough people to make the operation work and full and fulfill the obligation to the public and the needs and demands of that public Whew, I'll tell you, we are definitely um, in for something here, aren't we? So there it is, folks. Um, that's pretty wild. We, I definitely uh, been a wild ride at the Mint. I mean, she served as the acting director for, what, 25, 26 days or, or so. That didn't last very long. And uh, whew, I think I was going to get my plus one, but I'm going to save it for the next video. So check that out. So it's about 6.05 now. You know what? I'm just going to do my plus one now. I, I'm going to save the video because there's more to come. And I wanted to show you. You know what? I'm just going to do the plus one after this. I apologize. So this is the uncirculated coin set. And this is product 21RJ. And there is no mintage limit. And there is no product limit. And there was no household order limit when it was first available. Now, it's not sold out. But you cannot add it to the cart. Okay? So it is on a remind me status. And there's quite a few items this year that are on remind me status that may or may not come back. Now, here's the thing. Now, I want to give a big shout out to Civil Wolverine for bringing this to everybody's attention, this set, this uncirculated coin set, was unavailable on Sunday, if not Saturday evening. And why is that such a big deal? Well, they came out with about 208,000 of these sets, 211,000 last year, and we know that last year's 211,000 put it around 1959 as far as one of the lowest mintages in quite some time, in quite a few decades. Well, it just so happens if we go to the cumulative numbers for this product number, 21RJ, we're going to look at this. And this is cumulative sales figure. Just said that. And there it is. Adjusted net demand. These are sales, folks. And this is data ending October 24th. That was two days ago. And that was Sunday. 164,759 sets were ultimately sold. Did you hear that? 164,759 of these were ultimately sold. Now, to go back in time to find, I guess, when these uncirculated mint sets were at that level. Let's go ahead and, I know I expanded these. Okay, good. Um, let's go back to 2020. Uh, we know that 2020 was at 211,000. I mean, that's not even close to 160, what I say? 164, 759. That's incredible. So I would not open these sets. And I, you know, and this begs the question, why did a bulk of these, like there was about 40,000 of them remaining when we looked at the view the page source. So what had happened that made those disappear, right? Was it the fact that they were um, all, I, I just, you know what? The mint took them off the shelf. That has to be it. I mean, and I'm trying to get to these mintage folks to show you. Look at this, 583, 784, 745, 895, 890, or 847, 1.1 million. Now these are the uncirculated mint sets, folks. Um, and this is from 64 to 67, 1.8. 
2.2, 2.3, and well, there wasn't any for there. At least that's what they're saying. Um, and then, and then this is where we get close right here. So 1 million sets in 64, 600,000, 300,000, 223. We almost hit last year's 260 and 187. So there we are. We are actually, look at that, 187 there and 164 there. This is huge, folks. Is the 2021 United States Mint uncirculated coin set, does it really have a lower mintage than my 1959 set? And if so, I think that would be incredible. Uh, let me go to PCGS real quick here and find out what that set would actually be if we were to purchase that. So that's modern commemoratives, mint sets, 1947 to date. So we're going to go to 1959, right? There it is right there. And that's a $70 set. That's a seventy dollars set, folks. Now that's just we're talking absolute rarity right now, right? And that's less than that set. Um, does this particular uncirculated coin set charge or going to command that kind of premium? I don't know, but I would like to see eBay once word gets out that this set has only a hundred and well sixty four thousand pieces sold. And is it going to come back? Probably not. And if it does, I'd be surprised. Because the mint, let's face it, they're looking for they're looking towards next year already. They're looking at the female, uh, the women quarters program, the new American innovation dollars, maybe even the possibly extending the Morgan program, right? And even next year's American Silver Eagles. A lot going on at the mint, and they're changing leadership. And um, I'd tell you, it, to be a fly on the wall at that place would be really amazing to see what's going on there. I, I, and I want to thank you all for. Uh, listening to me kind of do the stream of consciousness this morning with the uncirculated coin set. I didn't really want to do this, but I thought it was important considering the fact that the numbers actually came out a lot earlier than they normally would. So um wanted to address that. Now, for my plus one, I know we're 12 minutes in and I'm going to make this short and sweet. Short and sweet. So this is about leadership and it's about, you know, the United States Mint's uh, leadership today and appointing leadership. So someone who is appointed to a leadership position, whether it be over a group or a company, becomes the servant of that group or company, right? They got to serve that group or company because leadership is not about imposing one's personal will upon others to follow, nor it is about amassing power or control over that group or company. Leaders serve that group or company by inflating the potential of their growth or their abilities through empowerment. Right? And this builds leadership abilities and qualities in others. Right? Let me read that again. So it's not about massing power and control. Leadership serve the group by inflating the group's potential through empowerment, which builds leadership abilities and qualities in others. That's huge, folks, and it's real simple. Build each other up, right? Don't build them. Don't tear them down. Be cool. Anyway, listen, I want to thank you all for watching. Thanks for dropping by. Don't forget to hit that like button. And if you do like what you hear and see, please subscribe to the channel. It's free. Son of a silver stacker. Out.